Hi, my name is Christy Chambers. I am the Assistant Director of Marketing and Communications here at Emmons Auditorium. Um, so you are at Emmons College Community Auditorium. What that means is we host events, everything from high school graduations, local dance recitals, to national touring artists. We've had Oprah Winfrey here, um, Florida Georgia Line, The Fray, large Broadway scale concerts and things like that. So we have a wide range of events that we host here. And right now, we're actually hosting college classes because of social distancing and things that we need to do. We also have a variety of virtual events that we're doing. So we do a little bit of everything. <laughs> so the auditorium has 3,309 seats. There's just over 1,000 seats in the balcony alone. And we actually can add an additional 72 seats on this portion that I'm standing right now. This is called the orchestra pit. And when it's lowered down to audience level, we can have additional seating that allows um, concert goers to really experience a concert like you're sitting on stage with the artist, basically. Um, so the venue was built in 1964. We, so it's been about 55 years or so, math is hard for me, 56 years, um, that we've been open. And as you can see, we haven't changed a lot. We look a lot like we did in 1964 with only one major renovation of our lobby. So now we're standing backstage. It's a little dark back here, but if you can see behind me, this section with all of the ropes, that's called the fly rail. So at an event, a performance that you see, if you see something like Peter Pan flying across the stage, or a curtain that moves, or a piece of scenery that maybe lifts up off the stage, that is all operated on this fly rail. This is a manual system, so there's literally a person standing backstage who actually pulls on the ropes and operates this as the items on the stage move. So like, like I said, Peter Pan flies across the stage, someone is over here pulling on ropes and helping him literally fly. Um, it's a cool system. We have thousands of pounds of curtains and props that hang off the system um, that actually is located directly above us, which might be hard to see right now. So on this side of the stage, we actually have a little bit of storage, but behind me, this is called the orchestra pit. So if you've been to a performance here, say the Muncie Symphony Orchestra, or um, maybe some type of musical orchestral uh, event, that basically means something that isn't mic. So you won't use a microphone to amplify the sound. Instead, we use this huge um, orchestra shell, and it actually turns the room into, or the stage into a room. It has a ceiling and three sides, and it actually echoes the sound off into the auditorium. But when we're not using it, it's folded neatly against the wall. And then also over on this side of the stage is where we have um, the heart of our sound system. This operates all the speakers and all the sound in the auditorium. And so that is literally the heart um, of how that all operates. Also on each side of the stage, we have two dressing rooms. Um, we have, well technically there's four, we have two hallways that lead to dressing rooms. Um, they are called star dressing rooms. So in each performance there's typically a lead or a star of the show. And that might be the headlining artist, um, so Florida Georgia Line, the main artist versus like the band members. Or in a Broadway play it might be the lead for Mamma Mia or something like that. They would have their own dressing room that's unique and special to them. No one else would be able to go in there, so they have their own space. So on each side of the stage, we actually have two dressing rooms that are star dressing rooms that um, the stars can use by themselves. Downstairs, which we'll go in a minute, we have a large coral dressing room that's a lot more space, but it's for multiple people. It doesn't give a lot of privacy. But first, interview segment. So Emmons Auditorium as a whole um, was originated on campus to be a theater for both the community and the campus. Ball State University's sixth president, John R. Emmons, is our namesake, obviously, as we are named Emmons Auditorium. And he envisioned an auditorium that would be large enough to house most campus functions and serve as a cultural um, marketplace for East Central Indiana. We host events that are nationally and internationally acclaimed, um, events that otherwise wouldn't be possible to have here in Muncie, Indiana. So we bring a lot of events to campus um, that people otherwise wouldn't be able to see. And most of our events are priced much less expensive than the same event if it was 
to happen in New York City or Chicago. Um, our events cost are very nominal and for actually Ball State students, most of the events are either free or $5. So it's a huge opportunity for this community to be able to have a venue that can provide such a arts and cultural um, gemstone right here in Muncie. And as a Ball State student, you get to see events that you would never have the opportunity otherwise to see. And so it's really a cool thing. So I am the Assistant Director of Marketing and Communication, which means I handle all of the advertising, promotion, marketing, public relations for the venue. It's just a fancy way of saying that I help sell tickets. Um, I promote the event, I put it on social media, billboards, radio commercials, newspapers sometimes, um, and just help get the word out about the events that were happening so people are interested in them and will purchase tickets and attend. Um, which has a lot more details into it than that, but that's the overview. So I started here when I was a Ball State student myself. Um, we actually hire a lot of Ball State students, so when you're a student on campus, you can get an on-campus job, um, and it actually gives you a lot of opportunity. So you are able to work on campus and have real life experience. So for example, we have a graphic design intern, um, we have a marketing internship and a public relations internship just under myself alone. We also have um, 10 to 15 student usher staff that actually work the events themselves and they help you know, usher people in the auditorium, help them find their seats, and basically are the event staff. And then we have um, several other backstage student employees who would help make the events happen. They would literally help with sound, lighting, um, technical needs, and things like that. So it's a lot of real world experience. It's a lot of fun. So if you if you come to Ball State as a student someday, um, check us out. We would love to have um, student employees. We wouldn't be operational without them. So how has your involvement at MN shaped you as a person? Mm. <laughs> Probably in a lot of ways, because yeah. you've been here for a long time. Yeah. So I've worked at the auditorium for eight years. Like I said, I started as a student employee. I was the graphic design intern. Um, and I guess I f fell in love with this place. I was studying a degree in graphic design journalism. Um, but for some reason, when I started working here as an intern, I decided I wanted to go a different route and not go into journalism at all. And used my graphic design experience to do marketing and work for a performing arts venue. And I like to joke, um, once you get into the performing arts industry, you kind of get hooked. And it's something that you want to work in. You love the opportunity. Um, and not only to meet all of the artists and realize that they're just people like everybody else, but also to um, see the type of events and just the amount of culture and things that I wouldn't have taken the opportunity to see otherwise. It's really cool. And I get to do things like Make-A-Wish Foundation came and um, we did a special meet and greet with, li with a wonderful little boy. And I get to do things like that with my job that just makes such a huge impact. So I love it. <laughs> So right now we are in what's called the green room. Um, as you can see, this room is not green. Um, it's actually named this way because back when Shakespeare, and if you have not heard of Shakespeare, you will, trust me. Um, back when Shakespeare had performances, they were done outside um, and it was open green space. And before they went on stage, they hung out in an area that they nicknamed the green. Once theaters started being built indoors, um, this kind of nickname continued and we created a room called the Green Room. Every theater across the country will have a room that's called the Green Room. And as you can see, it's just full of couches and lounge so people can relax um, and get ready to perform on stage. So now we're gonna enter the coral dressing room. This is a U-shaped and we'll go right over here. Here comes the echo. This dressing room was created in 1964, so it looks just like it did back then. Um, it's not a lot different, but this is where you would put on your wigs, your makeup, and get ready for the show. This is where most of the um, performers would get ready. This is basically it. Okay. Mm -hmm.